This screencast is one in a series on reactor calculations, and the title is The Continuous Flow Stirred Tank Reactor. The content is the continuous flow, CSTR, some properties, the mass balance equation, the residence time, the reactor calculation methodology, one example, one example of sequential, one of simultaneous solution of the mass balance problem, a definition of conversion, and finally some remarks. Let's start with a picture of the continuous flow stirred tank reactor, with its impeller and the input flow and the output flow. The CSTR is very common in large-scale chemical processes, where there is an economic advantage to have a continuous production. It's widely used as water treatment reactors, and we can also make an analogy between the CSTR and a well-mixed lake. The CSTR is open with respect to matter and, sometimes also, energy. The main property is that it is perfectly mixed. There are no gradients in the reactor with respect to concentration, nor with respect to temperature. And there's no travel time from the inlet point to any other point in the reactor. The mass balance for the CSTR builds on the general mass balance for all systems. That says that the input plus the production equals the output plus the accumulation. And in molar quantities, F for molar flux and N for molar amount, the mass balance equation is F in plus F prod equals F out plus dn dt, which is a time derivative of the number of moles of a substance within the reactor. In process quantities, this can be expressed as Q in times C in plus R times V equals Q out times C plus the time derivative of C times V. At steady state, the volume is constant and also Q in equals Q out. And that means that we can simplify the mass balance equation to Q times C in plus R times V equals Q times C. Now's the time to introduce the main residence time. Since the content of the reactor is continuously renewed, we can define the mean residence time as theta equals V divided by Q. So we see that if we increase V, we increase the residence time, and if we increase Q, the flow rate, the residence time decreases. We can substitute theta into the steady state mass balance equation. If we divide all the terms in the mass balance equation by Q, we get C in plus R times theta equals C. The CSTR reactor calculation methodology involves four steps. The first one is to determine the flow and mixing conditions in terms of an ideal reactor and to define the mass balances. The second step is to define the kinetic equations and the kinetic coefficients. And the third step is to combine the appropriate number of mass balances with the kinetic equations to form the design equations. The design equation is the combination of the mass balance equation and the kinetic equation. And the fourth step is to perform the calculation, either analytically or numerically. Let's take an example for a first-order irreversible reaction. Calculate the concentrations of A and B in the output flow of a steady-state CSTR where the reaction A yields B, where the rate equation for the reaction is K times CA. We have the following system properties. The input flow concentration of A is 2 moles per cubic meter. The input flow concentration of B is 0.2 moles per cubic meter. The volumetric input flow, as well as the volumetric output flow rates, are 1.25 cubic meters per minute. The reactor volume is 5 cubic meters and the kinetic rate coefficient is 0.5 per minute. The first step is to define the flow and the mixing conditions, and obviously we have a CSTR at steady state. The design equations needed are, to calculate CA, we only need the design equation for A, but to calculate CB, we need both the design equation for A and the design equation for B. So the mass balance equations are CN of A plus RA times theta equals CA, and the mass balance equation for B is CN for B plus RB theta equals CB. The kinetic equations are the following. Since it's a first-order reaction with respect to CA, the rate equation for the reaction is K times CA. The rate equation for the substance A equals minus K times CA. And it's a negative sign because A is a reactant. While the reaction rate for... We can now combine the mass balances with the kinetic equations to form the design equations. And they are here. 
The first one refers to A, where we have inserted the kinetic equation for A into the mass balance for A. And the second equation is a corresponding equation for B. Regarding the calculations, we can either make a sequential calculation where we start to solve for A and then solve for B. Or we can make a simultaneous calculation for CA and CB at the same time. And the reason why we have this option is that in the kinetic equation for A, CB is not included. So let's start with the sequential solution. Well, for A, we have that Q CN of A minus KCA times V equals QCA. And if we move all the terms that deal with CA to the right, we get the second line. In the third line, we have substituted V and Q for theta to get CN of A equals parenthesis 1 plus K theta times CA. And if we move CA to the left and divide by the parenthesis, we get CA equals CN of A times 1 over 1 plus K theta. And with numerical values, we get CA equals 2 times 1 over 1 plus 0.5, the kinetic coefficient, times 5 divided by 1.25, which is theta. So CA equals 0.667. We can now evaluate CB. CB equals C in a B plus K times CA times theta. And with numbers, we get CB equals 0.2, the input concentration of B, plus the product of 0 0.5, 0 0.667, times 5 over 1.25, and that is 1.553. We can now make a simultaneous solution, and here we have the systems of equation expressed in Q and V. If we introduce resonance time theta, we get a systems of equations with the first equation, which is a design equation for A. And there we have one term and a coefficient for CA on the left side, and on the right side we have the input concentration of A. The second equation is the design equation for B. There we have one term for CA and another term for CB, and that equals C in of B. We now recognize that we can express this in matrix notation, A times X equals Y. It's a linear system of equations where the coefficient matrix is one plus K theta and zero for the first equation, and minus K theta one for the second equation. And X is the column vector with our variables and y is the right-hand side of the design equations above. Let's go to MATLAB and make the calculation. Here we have MATLAB with a fresh and clean command window. We now start to define our parameters. V equals 5, Q equals 1.25, theta equals V divided by Q, rate coefficient K equals 0.5, C in A equals 2, while C in B equals 0.2. We can now define the coefficient matrix. A equals 1 plus K times theta and 0. That's the first design equation. The second equation is minus k times theta and 1. And y equals c in of a and c in of b. And we can calculate x as a slash y. And we get 0 0.667 and 1.533, just as when we did the sequential calculation. And here is the summary of the calculations. Conversion tells us which fraction a reactant that has been converted in the reaction within the reactor. We define X in terms of molar fluxes as the difference between F in and F out divided by F in. And this can also be expressed in process calculations in terms of Q and concentrations. If Q in equals Q out, then we can eliminate Q from the definition of conversion and we get X equals C in minus C out divided by C in, or 1 minus C out divided by C in. For a first order reaction, RA equals minus K times CA, 
we can define the conversion for the reactant A as follows. In general terms, X equals 1 minus C out divided by C in. But if we substitute C out for C in times 1 over 1 plus K theta, we get that X equals K theta divided by 1 plus K theta. We then see that if K or theta is very large, the conversion X will approach 1. Finally, some remarks. We must note that the mass balance for the CSTR is defined for the whole reactor volume. So we have a very large control volume in this case. The concentration in the output stream is the same as the concentration in the reactor. We should also recognize that since the reactor operates at the output concentration of reactants, the kinetic driving force is constant, so that Ra equals minus K times Ca. And finally, why do we have CSTRs? Well, there are some real-life advantages. First, the long residence time in relation to the reactor rate makes a CSTR reactor very stable. Another advantage deals with heat transfer. It is possible to add or remove heat through the reactor walls, which can serve as heat exchangers. The content of this screencast was the continuous flow stir tank reactor, the CSTR, some properties, the mass balance equation, the definition of residence time, and how to make reactor calculations, a definition of conversion in molar fluxes, and finally some remarks.